Right, let's try this shutter on the front of the camera. Yeah, that shutter's firing, so the timing must be about right. I'll see if I can hear the point at which the shutter is cocking relative to the film advance. Yeah, it cocks just slightly f before the film advance gets to the end of the stroke. That's probably, I'll try advancing at one extra tooth. That's better. I'm quite happier with that. I'd rather the shutter cocks just slightly before the film advance reaches the end of the stroke so that we can be sure that the shutter will work cock correctly even if there's a bit of wear and tear in the cocking rack and things don't move as far as they might. So I'll put the retaining ring in place. Tighten that up. Now I can tell here that the film advance is not being released at the same time the shutter is being released. The film advance needs to be released a bit earlier. So I'll wind that screw up a turn. Still not. Let's try another full turn. Oh, I can tell by the look of that that it's right on the cusp. Give it half a turn. That's it. That action's good. Now that screw, I said that I'd lock that in with a bit of lacquer, so I'm going to do that now. This is a bit tricky trying to get the lacquer exactly where you want it and nowhere else, because otherwise it wants to go on the spring and God knows where else. Yeah, I think I can do that. It's almost what I wanted. I don't want the cracker binding to the spring or it won't return correctly. Likewise, I don't want lacquer all over the shaft, otherwise it won't drop and fall correctly. So that, I think, is pretty good. I need to tidy up after myself now. That'll be fine, that's good. And that just ensures that that screw won't back out, um, which would make it release the film advance earlier in the stroke. If in a worst case scenario, it backs up so much that it actually locks the film advance, because it's acting like that's depressed it all the time. It doesn't allow it to lift high enough to clear the 
cam at the bottom and allow you to wind the film on. So that part's good. So now we're back to looking at this door. Now this door, as you remember, had a hell of a twist in it. Now what I've done with this, I've been able to correct it to a large extent and I've done it through the time-honoured fashion of applying a lot of brute force. So basically, I've set this thing on a wooden block so it's raised on this corner, held a lot of pressure on this side with one hand, pressed down really hard on the other hand until the stage where my bloody hands are sore. And I've got it so that it's parallel. The twist is gone. If we put it on the front of the camera, you can see that there's no great gaping gap there anymore. It might not be perfect, but it's pretty good. So the door itself appears to be probably a goer. The arms, yeah, well that's certainly bent. I don't know if I'm going to be able to bend that back successfully. You can see that the base plate here is quite bent. I'm going to certainly try because these are tidy examples, but they're just bent. So if I can square those up, I'll be much, much happier. So I'll work on that, come back when I've got something that's worth showing. I've got the arms back on. They don't look too bad at the moment, but I don't know if they're all in the right angle. So I'm still a bit unsure whether this is going to work well or not. The bottom one looks quite good. The top one's got an odd sort of bow to the middle of that arm. It's might have a twist of some sort in there that I'm not quite seeing. Anyway, I'll put the hinge pins in and see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? It won't work? Well, we've been there. That's one. At the bottom, can I get that washer in there? Slightly thicker washer here because I used the thin one. Yeah, it does fit. I used the thinner one in the film advance mechanism as a shim on the bracket. But this one does fit. I'm trouble lining that hole up. Here it is. moment of truth. Will it close? It does close. Stiffer than I'd like and I can probably deal with that by changing those angle of those arms slightly but it does open and shut. There's still a bit of a gap at this top edge. I don't really think I'd be able to straighten that up anymore. Not without breaking something. Well, I would consider that a win. I'll carry on from here. I've got to strip and clean that rangefinder, I suppose. So the rangefinder, what are its problems? Well, the arm's somewhat reluctant to re retain, return to the uh, infinity position smoothly or quickly. Looking at at the back of it, I can see a thumbprint on the back, and that's neither here nor there. Looking through it, it says hazy as. The alignment is otherwise quite good. 
So the image is very hazy. The front and the rear glass are very, very dirty. And just for entertainment's sake, I'm going to clean just the outside surfaces without dismantling it and see how much of an improvement that makes. I'm interested to see whether that makes, I expect it makes 90% of the, uh, the difference actually in the cleaning would be the outside surfaces. We'll find out. Right, taking a little bit of glass cleaner, just normal old domestic window cleaner. We'll clean these exposed surfaces. And on the prism, remove the identifying fingerprints, front and rear. So we've cleaned the four available external surfaces. I want to check now and see what the image quality is like. Well, the rangefinder arm is still sticky, of course, but the image quality is pretty good. There's a little bit of haziness to it, but you would certainly have no problems using a rangefinder in that state. Um, which, I suppose, that's, that's that standard 80-20 rule, isn't it? 20% of the effort for 80% of the result. I'm going to strip this now and clean it completely, but um, from the state it's currently in, which is quite usable and not objectionable, um, all I'm going to achieve from here on in, apart from freeing up this vaguely sticky arm, is to just get rid of a little bit of haze. Right, I'll have this apart. Alright, let's have this apart. Remove that pin from the spring. Remove this screw here. It wasn't even tight. I could have done that with the tweezers. Take that out. The wavy washer. Lift the arm off entirely. Shake out the bush. The prism. Two little screws hold the prism in place. There are also the adjustment for the prism. The screws up here in the body, I mean, not these ones. The one here, leave that alone. The prism is held into its little mount with some lacquer and a screw at the top. Leave that screw alone and do not disturb the lacquer otherwise you will have a hell of a job lining up your images later. So dismantling this part we'll take that screw out take that piece off. So what's that mess? Is that rust? Yeah. Okay. That means that's been wet. The spring here holds in the rear silvered frame and the metal mask. The spring at the front holds in these other components. Now they're left, stuck in with a touch of lacquer top and bottom and I need to put some acetone on there to break that lacquer up. Before I do that, I'll just remove the rear eyepiece glass. It's held in with a single screw. Take that mask off. Flip that little lens out. And I need to find some acetone. Right, I'll just put a bit of paper under here. I'm not sure what will happen to my work mat if acetone comes in contact with it. Possibly nothing good. I'll put a drop of acetone on the lacquer at the top. A drop of acetone on the lacquer at the bottom. 
go back and do the same again. And hopefully that will soften the lacquer up. Now I've taken the clip from the back, so what I'm wanting to do is just see if I can separate the components here. So I'm just catching my fingernail on that frame, that mask in here. Just seeing if I can separate the mask and the silvered glass from the back of the front component. And I'm having no luck doing that. You have to be very gentle because that silvered, that piece of glass with the silvered lines on it gives you your frame lines. The piece of glass is very thin, very prone to fracturing. Something's just come loose there. That's it. So the mask is loose. I can push out my piece of glass with the silvered lines on it and the mask and this component at the front here we've got a little film on the front a little piece there and then our glass and the body here is virtually nothing left in this body now just the semi-silvered mirror and that'll I'll clean that in the, the ultrasonic cleaner because if the poke and prod at it, I'll end up stripping the silver off it. And if I strip the silver off it, we'll have a nice clean viewfinder that um, has no, view, no range finder image. I'll just wipe this grease off the surface first with a bit of naphtha so I'm not contaminating the water I'm using for cleaning purposes. Try and get that rusty mark off there. No, that's pretty permanent. Okay, so far so good. This to the ultrasonic cleaner, I think. Well, that part's back and it's all nice and clean. The semi-silvered mirror is nice and sparkly. Absolutely good. So, start thinking about putting the rest of the components back in here. semi-silvered mirror here, or the, no, the glass with the silvered lines on it, this is the one that goes towards the back of the camera. Those silvered lines face the front. The silvered lines are only on one face of the glass. You can judge which surface they're on. That goes in there, the metal mask goes behind it and its retaining spring slides in. That's the simple one. The messy one is the front components and the front components are here. Now these were the ones that were held in place with some lacquer and so I've got to get all that traces of lacquer and rubbish off those and again I've got to use acetone to do that. So I'll start with the glass lens with our silvered lines on them. Now I notice here that the silvered lines are in nowhere near as good a condition as on the other piece of glass. But they're still pretty good. So I'll clean each of these pieces with the acetone to get rid of that lacquer. The lumps of lacquer on the edges, but more importantly, the faint smear of lacquer that I've now wiped on everything by having it dissolved by the acetone. And we need these glass surfaces to be absolutely clean and sparkly. Sometimes you'll need two or three attempts to get them to exactly the state you'd like them to be at.
that's good. This mask at the front is celluloid or something of a similar nature. It's like a piece of film. It doesn't dissolve in acetone, so you can clean it with acetone without any problems. And then the frame at the back is painted, but if you're gentle, you can wipe away the lacquer without stripping the paint off it, which of course is what we want to do. This piece of glass in the front, it's uh, concave on one face. The concave side goes inwards, the mask clips over this piece of glass like that. I just check that there's no dust on the inside surface. That looks good. I can slide that into the front. Our piece of glass with the frame lines, I'm checking this closely now to judge whether it's clean. It doesn't look quite sparkly to me, so I'm just going to clean this with a bit of wind, window cleaner to make sure I've got rid of any smears that might be on there, any marks. Again, the silvered lines are on one face only, they're not on both faces of the glass. The silvered lines should point to the back of the, of the rangefinder. And this goes in behind the mask on that front component. This little mask here gives us our frame lines. There are two little tick marks at the top, one tick mark at the bottom. The grey side, the dull side goes outwards, the shiny side goes inwards. That's in place and I can put the spring in place that holds all those components in place. So we've got our front components back in the finder at that stage. That retainer plate that had the rusty mark on it, which is no prettier but it's not going to cause us any problems, can go back on. I'll put that in position. Our rear glass, the eyepiece glass, needs to be cleaned. I've already cleaned the outside surface of that. The outside surface is virtually flat. The inside surface is convex. To make sure the flat side to the outside otherwise you won't get a very good image in your finder. Just checking that. There's a speck of something on there. Let's see if it'll blow away. That looks pretty good. I'll put its retainer in place, this mask. And that mask is held in with a single screw. It's the smaller of the screws. Let's blow the dust off there and I'll check the image looking out the window, the frame lines are good and clear, and the image is clear, and it's slightly less hazy than it was before I cleaned it, which of course is uh, the object of the exercise. And I can be happy with that result. The prism. Well, we've cleaned the two prism surfaces on the outside. The prism has a slight chip on this end. That's quite normal when somebody is attacking the camera from the top 
with um, probably incorrect tools and incorrect procedures. That's not a bad example by any means. It's, um, it doesn't help the image quality for the uh, rangefinder image, but that's not a bad example. Now I'm just cleaning the inside surface. The prism has three faces. I'm cleaning the third face now, the one that we didn't clean earlier. Checking those outside surfaces again. Bit of a mark there, but it may just be lacquer from the original assembly. That looks good. No dust or anything present. I'll pop that in place.